Now, enzymes have a huge range of commercial uses in medicine, the food industry, um, and technology. Uh, remember, enzymes are catalysts, so they never get used up, which means you can use them over and over and over again. However, if you're in industry and uh, you don't want, it, it can be quite fiddly to get enzymes out of um, the reactions that you're trying to do, the products, um, you can lose them um, and you might need to replace them. It can become quite expensive. Now the solution to this is to immobilize the enzymes. What you can do is you can trap them um, in some kind of insoluble uh, substance, an, an inert matrix, um, which is still porous, which so will allow the reaction still to take place. And then you can just take the enzymes out at the end very simply. An example of this are things like alginate beads as shown in this picture here. Really easy to, to make, um, the enzyme is trapped inside and they're really easy to extract again at the end and then you can be, they can be reused over and over again. An example of where they are used is to make lactose free milk. Now, certain people are lactose intolerant which means they can't break down the disaccharide and it builds up in the system and it gives them various health issues. Lactose free milk can be produced by passing milk over some immobilized enzymes containing um, lactase enzyme. Um, the milk's passed over it, the lactase breaks down the lactose into galactose and glucose, which are easily absorbed monosaccharides, easily digestible. So the milk becomes lactose free. A Couple of other examples of where uh, mobilized enzymes are used in food manufacturing. Um, fruit juice, especially apple juice, if it's made fresh, it'll be all really cloudy because it contains lots of this stuff called pectin, which is found in the cell walls. Now, a lot of people don't like the, that cloudy apple juice, they want it clear. And also it does affect the taste. Um, now, if you add pectinase, then it removes the pectin, breaks it down. And again, you can do that using immobilized pectinase. Another one might be uh, an enzyme called glucose isomerase, which is used in the food industry to actually make high fructose syrups because it converts glucose into fructose, which tastes a lot sweeter. Now, there's lots of economic advantages to using these immobilized enzymes, some of which I've already mentioned. Basically, the product is not contaminated with the enzyme. You can keep and reuse the enzymes over and over again really easily. Um, they are actually more thermally stable and tolerant of changes to pH because they're held in this inert matrix, which gives them a bit of protection. They're not fully exposed, so they can actually be uh, more stable and again, less likely to denature. And they can actually extend the shelf life of the enzyme because of this. Another place you find enzymes um, is on dipsticks that are used to test the components of urine to see whether urine's got protein in or glucose in or what the pH of it is. So these little dipsticks are, can be dipped in urine and they will change color based on the concentrations of these substances in the urine. Really useful, quick diagnostic test. Now, um, the example we'll look at is how much glucose is in urine. Really important test to look for things like diabetes. And there are two enzymes that are, that are, that are immobilized on that dipstick. There is glucose oxidase and there is peroxidase and they catalyze the following reactions. Basically, glucose plus oxygen, it's catalyzed by glucose oxidase, makes gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide. That hydrogen peroxide then goes on to a second reaction um, with the colorless chemical in the pad, and that's um, catalyzed by peroxidase, and that will make the compound, the colored compound, the brown compound at the end. So basically, the more glucose you have, then the more hydrogen peroxide is produced. The more hydrogen peroxide produced, the more compound you get at the end and the, the darker the color will be. So it's a semi-quantitative test to show how much glucose there is in the urine and you need these two enzymes there for it to work. Now a biosensor can give a fully quantitative glucose reading from blood, which again, really useful if you're a diabetic, you need to take your glu blood glucose levels regularly. The way it works is that this glucose oxidase enzyme is immobilized in something called the biological recognition layer of the device. As this oxidizes glucose, the depletion of oxygen is detected and converted into electrical current by a transducer. So basically, remember looking at that reaction, the oxygen is gonna get less and less depending on how much glucose there is, and we can detect that, the sensor can detect that. It's quite a small signal, so then you need an amplifier to boost the strength of the current, and that will give the quantitative result in the end. 
So as usual, there's a few extension questions that you should consider if you want to research this topic further. What is the michaelis menten kinetics model? Can you explain what a multi-step multi-enzyme pathway is? How can you ensure high thermostability of enzymes? What happens at the active site to lower activation energy? And why don't you research further the uses of enzymes in commerce and medicine?